All right, cool. Let's move away from all this stuff because I've been talking about world shit. I've been blabbering. I've been moaning. Um, you know, I've just been chatting out of my fucking ass. So let's move away from all this stuff and let's talk about um, some Joseph Rogan stuff, right? Let's let's refer to him as his name, Joseph Rogan, right? <laughs> you know, fucking, that's how Brian Brendan refers to him. Joseph Rogan. So um, this is a clip courtesy of the Joe Rogan subreddit and it features Stavros and Joe Rogan talking about UBI. UBI. You know what's funny about this? I was kind of introduced to the term UBI because of Rogan. I didn't know if that was a thing, but I guess we, we've we always had a form of UBI in the UK in terms of, um, what's, what's it called? In terms of job seekers allowance and other government subsidies. And now at the moment we have like universal credit. And essentially what it does is that it gives you a subsidized, it gives you money for you to kind of cover your rent or your groceries, wherever it may be. So if you're out of work, um, you usually have, I think it's up to, up to like a thousand pounds you could get from there. And the idea behind it is that they give you just about enough so you can cover your main bills, but then obviously you want more money. So you're going to go back to work. So it currently encourages you to go to work. Um, the Tories are the ones that kind of slashed it back in the day. Um, what do you call it? Um, that sort of that universal credit payment used to be a lot higher. So families used to actually, actually survive on that shit. You could get like a thousand five hundred, but nowadays I think it's like, either 900 pounds or thousand pounds so it's really really low which is really sad because in the uk we also have a job crisis going on so when times are good having it low makes some sense because you force people to go back into work and then there's plenty of jobs and then the jobs obviously pay and then blah, 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 the money comes back into the coffers of the government but when there's not a lot of jobs around you have a ton of people who are quote unquote stuck on UBI, but the money's not in, sorry, or stuck on you know um, universal credit, but the money's not enough for you to actually live. So you might be able to pay your rent, you might be able to pay for some groceries, but it's not enough to like have a dinner with your fucking husband or fucking go to the game or buy yourself a fucking jacket. It's impossible because you just get enough to survive. So I've always thought of UBI in my personal my my idea of UBI was always like give people a base salary. That's enough for like the, gen the the general thing. So let's say the base salary is like one thousand two hundred. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's one. It's between like one thousand two hundred to one thousand five hundred. I think for most people, if you live in the developing world, if you live in the Western world, one thousand five hundred isn't enough for you to like pay your rent and go on holiday. You still need a bit of extra money. So I always thought UBI, what it would do, it'd get rid of all the bullshit jobs, right? That people shouldn't be doing anyway. It'd kind of free up your time. You'd have much better work-life balance. You'd feel better about yourself. So you probably might live longer. You'd be a much more valuable member to society and shit because you're not struggling and hurting for money. But then if you want to make more money to go to fucking Bali, you have to get a part-time job. And then what will end up doing for the part-time job sector, it will allow you to start doing some more creative and interesting roles because you can start doing things that maybe roles that you couldn't do before because it just requires you to work part-time. You know, you can maybe experiment in different fields. Um, you can maybe go and do some training and get some certificates and shit, wherever it may be, so you can increase your earning potential. But it can really change the job market in a big, big way. And, you know, again, allow you to sort of like make up the difference in money to allow you to do the other things you want to do. So I always thought UBI to be that. I never thought UBI would like solve poverty. Like you just give people free money so they can just sit on their ass. That's not possible. I there's obviously going to be people. There's obviously going to be people that would do that, but I think the large majority of people, they work because they like to work. Like like me, for instance. Like you just love. You know, it's not as much as I complain about my work. Like seeing your colleagues once a week is fun. You know, chatting to them via Slack is fun. Having some you know Zoom chats or whatever. If you're in the office, even better. It's actually quite fun to be at work. It's not that bad, really. Especially if you, if you especially if you don't hate your job. So if somebody gives you a UBI payment and you're working at a place where it's not too shabby, you'll probably keep both of them things going. So I never really saw the negative in UBI. But I guess when you're Rogan, the issue is when you're Rogan and you've made the money that he's made, you know that to pay for UBI, they're going to come for your pocket. So maybe that's the reason why he's so resistant to it. Because he knows deep down, people like himself are going to be the ones who are going to be responsible for quote-unquote footing the bill. 
That might be the issue that he has. And that might be something that happens to most of us when we get older and when we start making more money. Our uh, our kind of egalitarian, altruistic, you know, save the world shit probably starts to dimmer the more the older you get, the more kids you have, you know, the bigger your family, because then you start to realize, hey, they're coming after my fucking pocket. Nah, nah, nah. So maybe that's the thing. Let's hear what to say anyway. Let's hear what to say service workers because i had a friends in new york who like they were on unemployment and they were like whoa this is better than my shitty job that was a problem yeah that was definitely a problem and that made me rethink universal basic income what, like pro or negative well i used to be pro i used to be super pro universal basic income and my thought was if you give people no i thought it was i mean from i can only speak from like this isn't like you know a study but it helped the people I knew where it was like it didn't fu like they didn't get lazy they were just like holy shit that's I can pay my bills that's unemployment yeah I'm talking about universal basic gotcha, income gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha. universal basic income would be that everybody gets a certain amount a month no but that's the thing though UBI will eliminate those jobs that's what Joe's not getting those bullshit jobs like being a bar back at a, at, at a pub like I've had friends who've worked in bars and they've had to work at free bars to make a salary to make like a decent enough salary, right? Nowadays it's different because I think the, the minimum wage is a lot higher. But those type of jobs, imagine if you have UBI. If you want to work in a bar, you still could, but you could work in a bar for like 500 pounds for your extra money on top of it for the month, as opposed to like depending on that job to pay everything in your life. That's the difference. It will kind of get rid of the bullshit. It will kind of get rid of people's dependencies on bullshit jobs. And I think it's different. When you've had a bullshit job, you know the pain of going to work at, at a place where, you know, it doesn't really matter what you really do. The job is fucking terrible. Terrible customers. The managers are terrible. The company's fucking terrible. The product is fucking shit. Like, and they pay you like fucking dirt. Those type of roles, I don't think people should be suffering to work those kind of roles to pay for their life. If you want to work those things voluntarily, fine. But you shouldn't have to depend on those places of work to fucking you know to keep a roof over your head that's where ubi comes in so then it kind of can ease the pressure a little bit and allow you to maybe go and do things that you are maybe more passionate about that might be helpful but hey what do i know yeah like 1200 bucks yeah and the idea is you never have to worry about food you never have to worry about shelter yeah and now you can pursue whatever you want to right do. right right part of me thinks there's going to be a bunch of people that never do anything they're just going to live off that 12 which is fine though right kind of that's the thing I don't understand. Like, am I am I an idiot for saying this? Like, I don't understand this mentality. And I guess this comes and this comes from somebody who I think I think I'm a fairly driven person. I think I'm a fairly motivated person. But I don't believe that everybody should be like me. And I think it's perfectly fine if you don't want to be like me. This idea that everybody has to work hard is so weird. I've never understood this idea that everybody must work hard. Everybody must sweat. Everybody must kill themselves. Like, what happened to living in a society where the high performers may... Because in, in a company especially, in a big company, usually the high performers are the ones keeping everybody's everybody's job in place anyway. They're the ones who are really keeping the lights on. So what's the difference? It's not as if everybody in a work, in a corporate environment is working at the same level of hard workness. Yes, they may look different because they have suits on and shit, but it's usually a, what, 5 to 10% of the workforce who's actually contributing to 80% of the fucking value of the profits or whatever the company's making in the first place. So this idea that we all have to work fucking hard is insane. And as a caveat, it's kind of wild coming from these guys. You know, you, took, you're, you, know, you do a podcast for a living. Let's relax. But if, if that wasn't available to them, would they figure out a path in life? And how many people get tripped up by winning a lottery ticket? Like, the, 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 all, don't all. What, what a horrible example. What a horrible example. Most people don't win the lottery. <laughs> Most people just want to be able to pay their bills, go out for a fucking meal once or twice a week, maybe go to a festival, maybe go on a nice vacation. Maybe take their kids to fucking Disneyland. Most people don't want that much. The bare minimum, you know? Like, it's not that deep, really. Like, <laughs> all of them get tripped up by winning the lottery? Doesn't everybody get tripped up? It's pretty high, yeah. Unless so, you do certain things. There's a human psychology aspect to giving people free shit that I don't think is beneficial. 
I just don't think it's beneficial. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a social safety net. Right. I feel like welfare is important. What's the difference between a social safety net and UBI, honestly? Meant, like, if you're afraid that people are not going to work hard enough and you're going to have a whole country full of sleuths, what's the difference of having a social safety net and UBI? They're both the same thing. Because in the back of your head, you know you're never going to be down in the dumps. You're always going to have a fucking, guess what? Safety net. But at least with UBI, it empowers you to do... Honestly, I swear to God it will. If somebody gives you $1,000 as a base m monthly, that will open up the world to you a little bit more. You might still do your full-time job, but that's still $1,000 in your fucking bank account every month for quote-unquote free. That will go a long way. That will actually change for, for most regular working class, even sometimes middle class people... An extra thousand pound a month would make a big difference. So imagine that and you're somewhat driven. You might go and work. You might go and chase your vocation. You might go and help out at, at that school you went to help out at. But because the base salary isn't that great, maybe now with the thousand pound that's already in your account, you can now offset the fucking cheap, you know, the poor salary with the thousand to make it work that way. It opens up a world of possibilities. Like, I, I don't understand this idea that he has in his head. Important. I feel like food stamps are yeah, important. Healthcare. I feel like healthcare is important. All those things are very important. And, I, and education. I fully yeah. support that. Okay. I mean, if you're going to use taxes, I fully support yeah. using. Let's do that instead of tanks. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the best one. Exactly. But I kind of think Thank that you, people style. need to do things. And I kind of think giving people free money is a bad What do you want them to do? Do a podcast. Sell wooden chairs. Make wooden furniture. What do you want them to do? Do things. Raising a family is a thing. Taking care of your partner is a thing. Supporting your family is a thing. But he wants people to be working hard. What, in the fucking fields? Like, honestly, bro. Like, and again, this is coming from somebody like myself who I, I think I'm driven. I think I've got a lot of go get them fucking attitude. But it's not normal. Not everybody has to do that. It's not a requirement for you to be to live a successful life. It's to have like things going on and to have projects and shit. Good, good for you if you're doing that. Good for me if I am. I'll pat myself on the back. But it doesn't make me better than anybody because I have things that I'm doing. They're just things that I like to do. Everyone else I do, like, like, I don't... There's, there's honestly no difference, really, apart from the money made of Rogan being on a podcast, recording his podcast and sharing it the world, and some guy playing fucking Call of Duty at night after work every, every evening because that's the one thing that he actually enjoys. There's no difference, really. It's just that he makes a bunch of money for the thing that he does. Those are just hobbies you like to do in your spare time. Things that maybe take your mind off the fucking drudgery of daily life. What's the, what's the problem in that? Do things bad idea yeah i mean i think given those two options I would and 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 bear in mind the last time he told someone to do something like a brendan he fucking produced the worst comedy special of all fucking time hey man you should you should do stand up hey man you should do have a podcast hey man you should come perform you should come perform at the comedy store look how that turned out i much prefer a social safety net for that reason where it's 100 like, it's like even if your job isn't even if your job is kind of bullshit, if your basic human needs are taken care exactly. of, exactly. Like, Thank you. Still staff. go to work and make ends meet. Yeah. Like, if you get sick, you're you're not worried. That you're gonna uh -huh. like, you're bankrupt. Your life's over. If you can, but, like, but the thing is, you're not contributing if you're not doing anything. Right? Oh right? shut! What are you contributing? And you're just living. And you're... what are you contrib? Honestly, this guy, bro. The over. I love Rogan. I really do. I listen to just about every episode. He's my fucking inspiration. I fucking love the guy. But sometimes he can be so full of shit. What are you contributing to the world, really and truly? Really and truly, what have you contributed to the world? Because it could be argued, it could be argued, the strength of Joe Rogan is only based on the fucking quality of his guest. What has he actually done? Supplements. Been a host of a TV show. Commentator the UFC. What have you actually contributed to society, please? Because, it, again, I love the guy, but it could be argued... It's the people that you have across from you that are on that table who are the actual important ones. Like fucking Eric Weinstein and his invention of that fucking rotato. Right? Those people are actually important. What have you actually done? What have you actually contributed to society? What Nobel Peace Prize have you won, brother? You're not contributing at all. You're literally a sponge. Like, I, I think... God I almighty, the guy that's surrounded by fucking sponges. 
The guy that's surrounded by fucking sponges calling regular civilians who don't want to work bullshit jobs sponges. Yo, let me tell you this. I keep telling you. I worked at this place called the Hollywood Bowl. The Hollywood Bowl in fucking Beckton. I worked at this place called the Hollywood Bowl in Beckton. It's now defunct. It doesn't exist anymore. Guess what? It's a fucking bowling alley. My first job out of fucking college. My first fucking job out of fucking college. I couldn't get any other job. And my uncle, who was working there, um, my dad basically got me that job. Kind of a, you know, like a fucking nepotism, like a working class nepotism shit. My uncle was a caretaker at this bowling alley. I couldn't get a job. I was struggling to fucking get a job. I came out of college, not one bit of experience on my CV. Every place I'd go and get a job at, tried to apply at, they said, no, 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 no. My dad says, oh, okay, cool, don't worry. I'm going to ask your uncle and then he's going to hook you up. My uncle hooks me up. Somehow, I don't know how he did it. He's a fucking janitor, but somehow he has good swing. He gets me an interview. I ace the interview. I start working at this fucking Hollywood Bowl place. Guess what I was doing at Hollywood Bowl? You fucking guessed it. I was fucking frying chicken nuggets. I was frying chips. I was making these like baguette hot dog things, right? You'd get a baguette. They had these baguettes that they would order in, in the, on the morning. You'd make them in the oven. You cut the top off. They'd have this little knife that was like a circle that you could gut out, gut out the inside and then you stick and you kind of cover the inside with ketchup. See, I still got the fucking muscle memory. You'd cover the inside with ketchup and then you stick the glizzy inside it. So it'd be like a, a baguette with a glizzy popping out of the top like that, right? And those would sell like fucking hotcakes. And I was in that fucking Hollywood bowl. I was what, 17 or something? And I and when I started, I assumed I was get I was given training. I assumed I was going through a trial phase or something. No, it was a real job. I had to take people's orders and then I had to run to the back and fry the fucking chicken nuggets and the chips and bring the food out. Then I realized why I got the job. It was the one station in that whole, in that fucking bowling arcade thing that no one wanted to work at because guess what? It was the worst job. You were in, you were over the fucking hot oil all day and you didn't have any help. You had to run, you had to, you have to serve, you had to take the order with the money and go make the food. So no one went, that's how I got the fucking job. Now that was a bullshit job. I worked that job for two months or something in the summer. The first paycheck I got working nine to six, like, a, you know, Monday to Friday, I opened my fucking paycheck on the way home on a bus. I nearly cried, brother. I nearly cried. I got like 470 pounds working full time, nine to fucking six, Monday to Friday. Sometimes I did six days in a week and I had 470 odd pounds as a paycheck. I nearly cried. I might have probably cried, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's a fucking bullshit job. That's a bullshit job. No one should have to do that and use and have to work that kind of job to pay their bills, to pay their rent, sorry, or to live. If you want to pay for that job, you know, whatever, cool. But you should have to work that just for, you know what I mean? Like, uh, 470. Be honest in case. Remember when Bopper said, who is Stavros? Never heard of him. Hey. He's not one of our guys. Not one I of our guys. what he thinks of him now. Oh, yeah. Have you noticed, Brendan doesn't, have you noticed one thing? Brendan doesn't mention Stavros. Have you guys mentioned, have you guys noticed that? He knows, he'll talk about everybody else who's been on pods, but he doesn't really talk about Stavros. He doesn't mention him. He doesn't mention him at all. Doesn't mention him in passing, zero. But I think because he knows, somebody told him, you know, because Stavros has said some, you know, some little slide digs of him here and there. And you know how Brendan is, if you don't say something nice about him, then you're an enemy. So it is what it is. But anyway, big up yours in case you appreciate it, brother. But yeah, that bullshit job that I had, no one should have to work that role to pay for their to like to support their family luckily i was living at home luckily i was only 17 yes maybe it's 470 isn't peanuts but still working what however many hours that is in a week monday to friday and you're getting 400 fucking 70 pounds and you're slaving over hot oil all day horrible customers shitty kids and shit that's not enough it's not worth it and it's not enough feel better if they had something that they did that gave them a sense of purpose right whatever it is yeah and yeah. i think that trying to find that thing and be successful at that thing is a part of the process that everybody has to go through to find themselves and you deny <sighs> no one's this idea that people want to find themselves again is such an, a point of privilege again maybe i have this perspective 
even though I'm somebody that would technically be would technically be more leaning on Joe's side, but I can always sympathize with the other side because that's what gen there's more people who are normies than people that are like Joe. Let's say that, right? There's more regular civilians who just want to work, have a wank, buy a beer and sleep than there are Joes who want to pump themselves through whatever chemicals, run trails, do jujitsu. Like most people don't want to do all that shit. Most people just want to live. So this idea that they have to find a purpose. Bro, some people are just working for working sake because this place, they, they exchange your time for money. That's it. And that's perfectly fine. No one needs to find their purpose. And what if their purpose is, is raising a family? What if their purpose is looking after their fucking pets? What if their purpose is, su you know, supporting their fucking mums and dads and shit? What about that? Is that not good enough? Do I have to fucking run a fucking marathon? Do I have to fucking run outside with my top off like David Goggins for you to respect me? Come on, man. Someone, that thing, if you just give them free money. Now, I'm yeah. not saying that you shouldn't be able to give money to unemployed single mothers, right, people, people who get whatever. fucked yeah, over yeah. by society, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you get fired, you're, you, you know, you have a monthly nut. Like, I think we no. should have a social safety yeah, yeah. I think I, it's important. But I also think if you just gave people money, a no, lot probably, of people wouldn't do shit. Yeah. You're More probably, no. people. Okay. Maybe I have to take a step back. Maybe he means Americans. Maybe it's different. You guys have in the chat. Maybe he means Americans. I think in the UK, if the Tories said we're going to give everybody a thousand two hundred pounds, most people would still work. No one's going to just take that and just sit on their ass. It's not enough, in, especially in London. It's not enough. One thousand two hundred pounds for free from the government is not enough to do shit. It can maybe cover some bills and amenities and stuff. Maybe get some, you pay off some debts, but you still need a job to do the things that you enjoy, even if it's fucking buying beers. Like it's not enough. But maybe he means Americans. Maybe American people are maybe more prone. And I don't think that's true either. I don't think that's fucking true. It's the Western world. Like, honestly, where in America can you pay for your rent under 1,000? Is there places in America that you pay for rent that's under 1,000 a month? Like an, a nice place that isn't a fucking a bed sit. Does that exist? Exactly. Everyone say no. Exactly. Exactly. So if that's the case, and there's no place where you can actually pay for rent under a thousand dollars, of course you're still gonna need to work to live somewhere nice. Like it doesn't make five hundred here in the Midwest. So there are some places, but if you want to stay where you currently are, you still have to make a bit more money. So this whole like, oh, they're not gonna be they're gonna be lazy. It's like no. If you want to keep your fucking one bedroom apartment in LA and you get a thousand free from the government, you're still going to need to fucking work. <laughs> that's not going to, you know, that's not going to do much. It's just going to help you in terms of like making sure that you don't need to maybe work a completely shitty job and bust your ass for nothing. You have that little bit of a cushion. That's really going to make a difference. But the idea that that money is going to instantly turn you into fucking having a hammock outside of your house and lying down is fucking insane. Oh, then would. The rare person... That even with that free money, says I'm gonna take this fucking money, yeah. and this is what I'm gonna spend half of it, and I'm gonna invest the other half, and yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. get a job as well, right, right, and right. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna fucking make something. Yeah, there's some of those people, but those are super rare. No, you're but right about that. It's human nature, man. And I think the thing, yeah, I think the nah, I nah, 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 nah. Yeah, let's get. Let's Don't get me wrong. If just if if the if we were living in better times and rent was cheaper, mortgages were lower. Fair enough. But nowadays, considering the economy to where it is around the world, considering we've been in a light recession in certain places in the world, most of our daily lives are ex more expensive. Like mo all of us can hear, can attest that your, your weekly groceries have gone up. Even me. I eat the same shit every fucking single week for the most part, right? Eggs, fucking eggs all fucking day. And even that shit's gone up. So if you want to, if you want to have an extra, a bit of extra money on the weekends, to you know to buy a pair of trainers or to go to the fucking cinema you're gonna need to fucking have another job you can't just depend on ubi but the the thing with ubi is that it allow you a bit of a safety net so you don't need to work free bar jobs to cover your fucking rent that should be that's fair enough isn't it let's cover our bases which we don't do right now right and i think the thing that i think just as likely for if you give somebody free money they're not going to do shit 
we're fucking trapped in this opposite thing where it's like people have to fucking work hard as shit to barely make it. Yeah. Where it's like that is zapping all that human potential too because those people are just surviving at shit that they don't have time to fucking because they just have to make rent. Fucking everything right. is more expensive. Right. They don't have any time to fucking. Exactly, Uche. Who is he to say how people will spend their investment money? How many kids' lives would improve? Exactly. You know what? I think he's got that. I think he's got that thing that Gary V has. I like Gary V. I read some of his books. I watch his YouTube show from here to there. But he's a bit insufferable and annoying too with this idea that everybody can be an entrepreneur. Some people just want to live. Some people don't want to be entrepreneurs. Some people don't want to hustle. Some people just want a bit of extra money to take their kid to get fucking ice cream. Like, it really isn't that deep. Some people want to be able to go to fucking Target if their kid pulls out a toy. They don't want to, like, have their heart skip a beat. They want to be able to fucking pay for the toy. Some people want to be able to go to have a fucking dinner with their fucking partner and not look at the bill. Those are some creature comforts that we all kind of enjoy. It doesn't have to be like business, a hustle, a startup, a cert, like fuck off, man. Fuck off. And I do agree with you that kind of the middle ground is get their basic needs met and then let them be able to work but not have to fucking work, you know. 60 hours a week or whatever the right. fuck or work 40 hours but it's grueling for less pay like because you do need that time you need that space to i, I think if you're you want to get correct. ahead and you want to figure your own path in life you got to have some time yeah it's yeah. going to either cut into your sleep or it's yeah. going to cut into your social life it's going to kind of like but you're going to need some time totally and that's the one benefit for a motivated person for universal basic income right but my f feeling was when i watched everybody during the pandemic when they were all getting unemployment how many people didn't want to go back to work? They just wanted that free money. I was like, yeah. ooh, this is wild. I mean, but some of that... Yeah, but come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's relax. Like, how much was it anyway? How much was that fucking stimulus check? Was it 1200 or something? Like, yes, people enjoyed that because they weren't going anywhere. There was nothing to do. It was during the fucking pandemic. 1200 where you're sitting on your ass is fine. When the world reopens, 1200 isn't enough. Or six, even 1600 is not enough. What's that going to do? What's that going to do? Especially if you've got a family. What's that going to do? And in my, I don't know about you, but most people want to work. They want to quote unquote contribute. They want to be around other adults, people there in their age group, peers, as Brendan will say. This idea that everybody just wants to lounge around in their home all day is nonsense. Look at the whole work from home thing. Most of the companies or most of my friends have all returned to the office. Some of them full time now. At first, everyone hated it. Everyone loves it again now because we all spent fucking three years, maybe two and a half years forced to be at home. Now going to work in an office is kind of enjoyable now. And now people have like a better work life balance. Maybe you have a split. Like some people I know who they have, they can work two days from work, two days at home, the rest of the week, you know, obviously at work in the office. All those things matter and they change the function of a job and they improve it. They improve your quality of life. They give you a much better work-life balance. But still, even if that, if you, even if you had a base of one sixteen hundred, four hundred, four twelve hundred, however much it would be, it wouldn't be enough to support you fully. You would still need to work a little bit. I know I would want to anyway. Why not? Why wouldn't you want to just take? If you're already working anyway, and someone gives you the extra little, you know, safety net, why wouldn't you want to work on top just to kind of make some extra money? That would go a long way. Maybe it can help you actually save. Maybe shock horror you could actually go and buy your own place that would be amazing imagine the amount of property owners it would open up imagine how much property to open up to people people who could never afford to get on a property ladder suddenly now can because you're working and you're getting ubi so you can maybe save the entire ubi payment and then you have a nice little bit at the end of the year that you can maybe put down for a fucking house or something or you know build from there all those things are important but when you have money like Joe, these type of things are going to make you your ass twitch because you know they're going to come after you the most to pay for all this shit. But it's insane that he thinks everyone needs to hustle, have a podcast, have a fucking startup. It's like, bruh. Also is that they were like, because my friends were like, what the fuck? This is like the, ba like I'm making less money working hard as fuck on what unemployment pays like this is what the government thinks you barely need to subsist and when i go back to work i make less than this mm -hmm. and i work fucking hard as shit i mean it's also a problem of like i think people also saw 
Uh, okay. Well, Stinger Goose said... <laughs> There, there are these examples. Stinger Goose said, my brother got unemployment for almost two years. He got lazy as fuck and regretted taking the money and not working eventually. All right, cool. So those people do exist. They do. I know they exist. <laughs> I get it. Those people do exist. But I think the majority of us, we would still want to work. We would still want to contribute. We would still want to make an extra bit of money. Why not? I think most of us would. I think as well, most of us might enjoy the novelty of not working and sitting on your ass, but after a while, you're going to get bored. I know I did. During the pandemic, when I lost my job at the beginning of the, the pandemic, maybe the, yeah, like the beginning of the pandemic, like the first year, it was kind of enjoyable to kind of be doing your own thing and living off my savings. But after a while, you got bored. I was like, fuck this. And obviously I went to earn, earn a bit more and you, you know, there's only so, so much savings one can have, one can have, sorry. So you, obviously I went back into the fucking employment world and hey, sarah, sarah. But I don't know. I think most people would still work. I think so. In that moment, how mistreated they were being and how underpaid they were being a lot of the time, mm. where it's like this low pay, which it wasn't that much money, right? Well, they started ramping up pay at a lot of places after the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. They ramped up pay everywhere. Like they advertise like high pay, like places right. like McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what does McDonald's pay now? I think it pays like. Eighteen dollars an hour or something like right. that. Or Twenty. What is how much does McDonald's pay? Does that upset you? I think it depends. I was walking through <laughs> Bucky's. <laughs> yes, Bucky's. Bucky's is famous for Bucky's paying is well. Shit. I was looking place. at like if you're a manager, you make a quarter million dollars a year. Pretty sick. And I'm like, probably Damn. and probably the only place where that's kept pace with. You know what's funny? There's probably managers at Bucky's that make more than stand-up comedians, <laughs> but the comedians act like they're better than you, even though you make more money than them. It's like, what? Because you get to like sit around on your ass recording podcasts and picking at your feet. And fucking bartenders, you think you're better than me? Fuck off. With inflation, yeah, it's also yeah. pretty low, depending on. Well, yeah, oh, see, twenty-one ten, twenty-one twenty, seven twenty-five is in like Dothan, Alabama. Yeah, <laughs> but I wonder, I wonder, Austin. even this, I oh, wonder, Austin, Texas, yeah. seven twenty-five to twenty. Boy, that's a big jump. Yeah. That's probably like man. That's three times as much. Yeah, but dude, that's I, a cashier. Yeah, that's what a cashier makes. Not a manager. That's good. The manager gets double that. Yeah, yeah. But I would, I, even the place where they're ramping up pay, I wonder what that even is in comparison to inflation from, from that same job in 1970. That's good right? question. You know what I mean? But the, the thing with Joe, he's just so divorced from reality. And it's, it's kind of by his own doing because he's kind of in a bubble as well a little bit, right? Which makes sense because I think that's the thing with wealth. It's kind of isolating. Riches and wealth is very isolating. There's not many people you can really hang around with. Um, most people are working, so you have all the free time in the world, so you have to hang around with other rich and wealthy people. Plus, you're super famous, so the fucking balance is is odd because everyone's kind of sucking you off. You don't really have your genuine relationships and shit. So that's kind of, you know, affecting his, his worldview because he doesn't really interact with regular people who have regular jobs like regular working class, middle class people. He doesn't really have a lot of them as friends. Um, or if they, he does have them as friends, they're not going to be telling him about his work day, about their work days. You know what I mean? He obviously won't care either. So that's why he has these really weird, divorced from reality opinions that don't really make any sense really, to be honest, because I can't understand how someone like him who seems to be more upset at the idea of UBI, but also seems to be okay with a social safety net. It's like, they're the same thing, bro. Do you know what I mean? If you don't want people to have any kind of support and to all pull themselves up by their bootstrap, you'd be like, you know what? I don't want any kind of government assistance. People like that do exist, but they're like, hey, people should have no government assistance. Everyone should be hunting, hunt, what, or eat what they hunt or hunt what they eat, whatever it is that term is, and that's it. Cool. But you can't say you don't like UBI, but then you're okay with the social safety net. That's fucking bizarre because they're both the same thing. If anything, UBI is a better thing because at least with UBI, it puts you in a position where... You earn enough to like cover major, maybe you earn enough to cover your mortgage, but it's not enough to cover your fucking broadband. Then guess what? You have to go get a, a job that covers your, your fucking broadband or your Wi-Fi payments. And then that, and then that maybe opens you up to some interesting jobs, interesting roles. Maybe, it, maybe it makes you go to a different location. Like it just changes things for you completely. And guess what? If you got a family, you can hang around your kids a little bit more because you're working part time. Look at that. Look how amazing that is now. You don't have to hire fucking nannies and shit. You don't have to fucking have family helping you out all the time. You can actually look after your kids and raise them yourself if you have a bit more free time. The shock horror. And guess what? Maybe you might have more kids because of that too. That's what, that happened in the pandemic, right? The pandemic, people were just at home locked, not doing anything, so they were fucking like rabbits. And then we had loads of babies. But hey, what do I know? <laughs>